Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 64, and we're going to read verse 1. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. What does rend mean? It means to tear. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. So he's asking the Lord, come down. Verse 2, as when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. In Revelation, there is a verse that a mountain like as fire goes into the sea and I think it burns up a third. So is that what this is referencing? The fire causeth the waters to boil. Because if a fire mountain went into the ocean and it boiled, I mean, what's going to happen to all the fish? They're going to die, right? And if the water was boiling, I imagine the people on ships wouldn't do very well either. And it says that a, a third dies. Let's take a look at that. Uh, that is in Revelation 8, 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Huh. Okay. Now, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 19. Verse 24. Then the Lord rained down upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. Let's take a look at... 2 Peter chapter 3. And there's those that are in the so-called Hebrew roots. And they'll tell you 2 Peter is a fake book, doesn't belong in the Bible. Peter didn't write it. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? I tell them, go to hell. Because, you know, that's where they're going. They just don't know it. You know, church... There were godly people that threw together the books of the Bible. And I think they picked it all right. I'm not so sure about Esther, but, you know, all the rest of them, yeah. Those people are evil. They think they know more than all the scholars from times past. So let's read 2 Peter chapter 3. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the command commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Verse 3. Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. 2 Peter 3, verse 4. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. The flood of Noah, right? Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Ooh. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, 
against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations, conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Ah, that's why. Your Hebrew roots people hate Paul, and that's why they hate 2 Peter chapter 3. Because Peter validates Paul as a beloved brother. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Yeah, some things that Paul writes are hard to understand. I mean, he was a scholar of the scholars. In which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. That's right. Those that don't like Paul are unlearned and unstable. And they wrestle those his words as they do the other scriptures under their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. How about 2 Thessalonians chapter 1? Yeah, this is the, those, he, this book was written by Paul. You know, that 2 Peter says that Paul's a beloved brother. Yeah, they don't like Paul. You know why they don't like Paul? Because Paul exposes a lot of things about the man of sin, the son of perdition. That will come in the last days. All right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Let's go back to Isaiah 64. Verse 2. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thy, thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which we looked not for, thou camest down, 
the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye, the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Jesus told the apostles, in my Father's house are many mansions. Oh, yeah. So what has the Lord prepared? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 9, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 64 and verse 5. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. In those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do all and and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth unto there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, we are the clay, and thou art, and thou I'm sorry. We are the clay, and thou our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth, very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. The holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation, our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? That is the end of Isaiah chapter 64. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen.